All right, let's get started. Thank you all so much for taking time to uh, come join us uh, in our Women in Tech event uh, this evening. My name is Julia. I'm a tech recruiter working on our talent acquisition team, uh, and I'm delighted to uh, take the role of MC uh, for this evening. So this event will be held in English, uh, and for those of us joining online, uh, you do have the option to uh, enable uh, English captions. Um, so you can uh, follow the instructions on the screen here to uh, enable captions, uh, if you like. And this is the agenda for this evening. So we'll kick off with uh, opening remarks as well as a uh, company introduction. Uh, and then we'll have a uh, product introduction from uh, three of our key uh, business areas. Next, we'll move on to a very exciting crosstalk uh, with three of our very inspiring uh, women in tech working in uh, Woven by Toyota. We'll do a deep dive uh, into their career, uh, their life inside work, uh, and of course, their life outside of work uh, as well. Uh, then we'll move on to uh, a quick introduction on our uh, company benefits, uh, as well as an introduction to our open positions. And that'll wrap up the agenda for uh, those of us uh, joining uh, online. Um, we'll be concluding the online portion of this event by um, sending out a, a short survey. And for those of you who were able to make it in person, if you do have the time, uh, we'd love for you to, uh, to stay for a, a casual social gathering session, uh, which will uh, kick off uh, around eight o'clock this evening. And just a quick bit of housekeeping for uh, this evening. Um, there is a trash can um, sort of uh, behind you here where um, you can separate your trash into combustibles, uh, recyclables. So your uh, cooperation in uh, separating uh, your trash and disposing is greatly appreciated. Uh, and when you're leaving the venue, um, please leave on the uh, fifth floor security gates. So you'll take the elevator down from 20th floor to fifth floor. And for your uh, guest passes, um, you can either return them to the staff who are waiting on the fifth floor, um, or you can just return them in the uh, return box, also by fifth floor uh, reception. Uh, and just a, a quick note on photos and videos. Um, so this event uh, will be filmed um, as per the uh, permission granted from the uh, attendees. Uh, and the footage will later be used uh, as part of the event archive um, on our uh, Woven by Toyota homepage, uh, as well as promotional posts uh, from Woven by Toyota uh, social media account, as well as Woven City social media account. Uh, and please also kindly refrain from taking photos or videos on this presentation deck itself, uh, as the uh, materials are intended for the uh, attendees of the event only. And now on to the, uh, the good stuff. Um, let us kick off with uh, a few words uh, from our Chief Operating Officer, Sinead Kaya. Sinead, please come up on stage. All right, let's give it up for our awesome MC, Julia. Thank you very much. So it's wonderful to be here. My name is Sinead Kaya, and I'm the Chief Operating Officer here at Woven by Toyota. And thank you very much for choosing to spend your time with us this evening, especially on a Friday in the summer. So very much appreciated. I wanted to just give you a very brief overview of Woven by Toyota. And I wanted to start actually by addressing one of the things you might be wondering, which is, why do you use the word woven in your name? And when I joined the company, I learned that the history of Toyota is actually rooted in the loom industry. So the original founder of Toyota invented an automated loom, which was really to help his mother and relieve the burden of her work. He used to watch her weaving in the house at night and think, oh, there's a better way to do this. And he created an auto or a hand loom that had many very interesting innovations to make it easier for her. He then went on 
to refine his invention, eventually to become the automatic loom. And it was actually the sale of the patent of the automated loom that gave Toyota the capital to start their automotive business. It was actually an offshoot of the loom business. So when we were choosing the name for the company, we chose Woven by Toyota, both to respect this really spirit of innovation and we call courage to make history, but also to respect using technology and your skills and capabilities to make life easier for others. So our mission at Woven by Toyota is to deliver safe, intelligent, human-centered mobility for all. I personally need a purpose that'll drive me, you know, when I get out of bed in the morning to know that I'm coming to work, to work for a company that's truly making a difference. And if I was to pick up just one of the words in our mission that means a lot to me, it would be safe. There were over 2,000 people killed in traffic fatalities in Japan last year. And as a parent, that's heartbreaking. That means 2,000 loved ones who were lost. And we dream of a world where traffic fatalities will be a thing of the past and where no child should ever have to lose a parent and no parent should ever have to lose a child to a traffic fatality again. And as a parent, that means a lot to me. And I'm always very proud to tell my, tell my children that's what I'm doing when I get up and go to work every day. Not just writing email, which is what sometimes they think. <laughs> the other word that might stand out for you in our mission is mobility. What do we mean by mobility? It's a relatively new word. From Toyota's perspective, we see mobility in three rings. The first ring is what we call the transition from cars to mobility. You th can think of traditional cars pretty much as pieces of sophisticated mechanics and hardware. And cars are currently going through an exciting transformation to really become computers on wheels, right? They're becoming software defined, they're becoming connected. And this is the first stage of the mobility transition. In the second phase, we can see using connected vehicles and vehicles that go beyond just cars to expand access to mobility for more people. Not just to people who are able to drive, but maybe to people who don't have access, easy access to a car. That's new types of mobility services in phase two. And then in phase three, we imagine a world where smart vehicles are interacting with smart infrastructure to truly make a more intelligent uh, environment and to really drive not only safe mobility, but also sustainability. And you'll hear about that in Woven City. So this is a very exciting time to be in our industry. It's a very rapidly changing market with a lot of innovation. What you'll see right now in the mobility space is a lot of emerging com companies that are software native, that are global, that are scalable and extremely data driven. So what you might think of as the traditional automotive industry is rapidly being redefined by software and by AI. It's also an exciting industry to be in because we're at the brink of developing new customer experiences. The experience someone is looking for in a vehicle or in mobility today is very different than in the past. People are used to the smartphone experience and they're looking for personalization, experiences that are immersive, that are regularly updated through software. And so for anyone who likes to do user experience, right, or new types of experience, or know that your technology is going to reach a large uh, group of users, it's a very exciting space to be in. We're also changing the way that we develop software and in automotive, and it's also a really uh, emerging time for new tools and processes to make sure that we're de truly developing in an agile way and scalable way. So for Woven, our main focuses that you're gonna hear about today are what we call ARIN. That's our software operating system and platform for vehicles. 
you'll hear us talk about AD8US, which is automated driving and uh, advanced driver assistance systems, which are critical for safety, as well as our Woven Capital Venture Fund and our Woven City, which is a living, living laboratory where we're watching how mobility and infrastructure and humans all interact. So with that, let me hand it over to our speakers who are gonna deep dive a little bit in our technology areas. So Julia, back over to you. Thank, Thank you, you, Sinead. Thank you very much for that, Sinead. Uh, so next up, we have our product introductions. Um, so today we've got three speakers who will introduce three key products to you all. So we'll kick off with an introduction to Irene. Myra, please come up on stage. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining us in this uh, warm uh, Tokyo summer night. Um, it's really nice to have you here. My name is Mayra Castellanos, and I'm one of the product managers or owners in the Arene platform. So a little bit about myself. So um, I joined uh, Woven about one year ago. So I celebrated my anniversary last, year, uh, last week. Um, about my career, I actually, I come originally from Venezuela where I studied um, and then I started electronic engineering. Um, after that, I went to Germany and I did most of my career in automotive, in Bosch engineering. I also had a bit of a break in uh, innovation for a smaller German company called GS1. And then I came last year, like I mentioned, to um, Japan to work for Wolfman. Um, the department in which I'm working is the Arene department. I will give you some details on what Arene is in a little bit. Uh, my role, product manager, and what I like to do. So I've discovered many, many fun things that I've enjoyed doing here in Japan. Um, I, you know, kind of aw awoke my love for yoga here. I uh, love to travel, especially in Japan now. And uh, I discovered a new hobby, which is Ikebana. Uh, maybe some of you know that. Uh, about a uh, flower arrangement, like a Japanese uh, art, I would say, of uh, flower arrangement. I really enjoy it very much. I love to cook and I love to dance, spending time with my family, partying. You know, that's also something I really love to do. Okay, now let's get down to business. So about Irene, I think Sine did a great introduction into what Irene is and some of the goals that we have here at Woven by Toyota. Um, maybe before jumping in, I want to explain a bit about the motivation behind Arene. Um, as you know, a vehicle right now is mainly software, but it didn't used to be. So one of the main motivations that we have in Arene is to support Toyota in that mission of transforming Toyota into a software first company. So that is one of the first things we want to achieve. Of course, we also want to break legacy of uh, integration practices that slow down innovation. So there's many practices that have been there in the automotive industry that we want to help break and accept to accelerate development. And of course, uh, we want to support software development capabilities. So um, here I bring a kind of a picture of the whole ecosystem of um, Arene in the bottom. And on the top is more, uh, more of like the user-centric, like end user-centric aspects. So if you focus on the bottom, um, what Arene does is mainly the SDKs and the tools to support software developers and suppliers that implement the apps that power Toyota's vehicles and services. So that is where we are focused in Arene. Of course, by doing that, then we enable um, what is the user interaction, so the top part of the pyramid. Some of the elements which you see there, like um, personal location, safety, um, uh, like dealer user experience, service, uh, society, some of them are covered by what we do. Others are covered by Woven City, for example. But we try to basically create that platform um, which enables you know, the top part of the, of the triangle in a way. Um, I would say that the vision of the Arene platform is to create a well-connected uh, software developer community 
it, throughout which Toyota, its first year suppliers and all the developers involved can collaborate. This has been a challenge because again, Toyota is a hardware first company and with Arin, we're really trying to accelerate the software development and help them transform. Um, the four major goals that we're um, attempting to achieve with Arin and the work together with Toyota is to reduce the lead time um, of the vehicle production. We also want to be able to release software more frequently. Um, we also want to enhance the cost competitiveness of the software um, development and to enhance product competitiveness of vehicle software. So with that, I mean, I brought here a picture of that. I will be around for questions later, but I think with that, I give it to the next speaker introducing the next product. Thank you, Myra. Thank you so much. Oh, I've got control of this. Okay. Hi, my name is Michael Patton. Um, I work for Woven City, which is one of the projects we're doing here at Woven Planet. Um, just by way of introduction, um, I joined about a little over two years ago. Um, it's been a really fantastic time. Um, I worked for some other companies beforehand. That's not interesting. Um, and uh, um, and I'm, my department that I work, uh, that I lead is the city software platform. So we're building a, a software platform for all the services that will run in Woven City. Um, I do actually have some hobbies outside of work. I like to drive in circles as fast as possible and I'm into old coins, which is very boring. Okay. Um, why are we building Woven City? What is Woven City? That's a good question. I'm glad you asked. It all goes back to uh, 2011. Uh, who here was in Japan uh, during 2011? So most of you will probably remember we had a little bit of a shake back then, um, and Tohoku was, you know, very badly damaged. Um, uh, so a lot of companies, you know, uh, donated cash um, to try and help Tohoku, um, the Tohoku area recover. But Toyota did something different. Um, they decided to build a new company in the area to, uh, to support the local economy, to pay taxes, um, and to help um, build up uh, Tohoku region. Um, in fact, I think the uh, president at the time of Toyota actually said there will be no recovery of Japan until Tohoku recovers. Um, but uh, that meant that as part of all this relocation and building a new um, uh, manufacturing facility um, in that part of Japan, there were some factories that closed down in other parts of Japan. And one of those was uh, in the Higashi Fuji uh, region. Um, and uh, so that, 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 um, that area uh, near a, a town called uh, Susano, um, was that, that factory was shut down and in fact has since been shut down. Um, and uh, people asked, a lot of people moved to Tohoku, but other people couldn't. So they asked, what, what are we going to do with this site? Um, and, um, and again, our president um, immediately, you know, had, had a vision. I immediately answered the question, we are going to build a prototype city here, um, in, both to look to the future and build new types of mobility, but also to honor 53 years of um, monozukuri craftsmanship that had been the Toyota employees had been uh, performing on that site, um, you know, in the past. Uh, so that is why Woven City is in Susano, and uh, that is uh, I'll show you some photos later. It's a real city, and it's being built right now. Um, so as a company, um, you know, what is our purpose? What is our vision? What is our mission? Um, our purpose is the same as Toyota Motor Company. Um, it is well-being for all. Um, our vision is we want to expand mobility, we want to enhance humanity, and we want to engage society. Uh, so, but how are we going to do that? You know, what is our mission? Um, and it's to build the future fabric uh, of life in a city as a test course for mobility. Um, now, you'll hear me say the word test course multiple times. Um, this city that we're building is, is not supposed to be the end product. We hope to build really fantastic future products at this test course. Um, so sometimes people do call it a smart city and it is a smart city, but as I said, for us, it's really a test course for mobility. Um, and we're gonna try and make ever better cars, of course, uh, that's part of Toyota's mission, but we want to expand 
to become a mobility company, as Sinead mentioned earlier. Um, and uh, so when we're thinking about mobility for all, we have to think way beyond the vehicle um, and to think about um, mobility of, of information, goods and people. Um, it's really interesting to consider that uh, the word mobility, you know, means movement. And of course, we know that movement means going from A to B, but um, we also often use the word move when we have, we're talking about emotion. You know, your heart is moved. And, and that's a very important aspect to what we're doing as well. Um, it's not just the engineering of moving things around, it is the connecting with people's emotions and enhancing and enriching their lives. So let me tell you a little bit, a little bit about where we are right now with building the city. Um, the plan is that uh, after phase one, um, it will be 50,000 square meters in size. Um, and uh, we're gonna finish the construction in summer 2024 next year and start demonstrations in uh, 2025. Um, and at first we're gonna get a whole bunch of people from Toyota to move there. Uh, we're gonna you know, um, offer um, for them to move there. Um, and um, eventually we feel that uh, we're gonna have about 360 people living there in phase one. We're going to invite entrepreneurs, researchers and inventors to help invent those new um, forms of mobility. And we're gonna be ever evolving. It's never gonna be done. Uh, so um, let's see, what have we got here? Here's some examples of the things we're working on right now. Um, you can see here automated driving, um, um, remote communication technology, logistic services, robots. I think robots are cool. Um, portable hydrogen energy. We're, we're working with partners like Enios, Nishin, Rinai. Um, so we already have inventors outside of Toyota working with us in Woven City. Uh, that's the rough timeline. We kicked the whole thing off in um, 2020 with an announcement, a conceptual announcement at CES. Um, and since then, we've been working hard. We've, we've had groundbreaking ceremonies and started building the city. And of course, we've built teams of software engineers um, to start building all of the software services that are going to run into the city and teams of hardware engineers to build the robots. Um, and we are looking for fantastic engineers to join us on this journey. Uh, so there's some pictures. It's real. I got to go down there just about three weeks ago. They gave me, you know, one of those high vis jackets and a hard hat and special shoes, and we traipsed around. And uh, it's it's a giant project. It's really, really interesting. Um, and yes, yeah, so um, just to recap, we we aim to begin demonstrations in 2025, um, and then we're going to build from there. It's going to evolve. We don't know where it's going to take us. Um, but we're very excited to be on this journey um, and please think about joining us. Um, thank you very much. Thank you, Michael. Oh, I should uh, say I will introduce the next speaker, which is Usha. Welcome on stage, Usha. Wow, that was really awesome. I almost forgot that I had to come up and speak. Um, all right, so I am going to be talking about enterprise technology for the next few minutes. Um, I am Usha Ramachandran and I lead product management um, for Entech. So before I jump into what Entech does, let me just give you a quick overview of my myself and my background. So my journey so far has been pretty varied. I started out as a software engineer and then realized that I wanted to work more with customers and understand why we're building the products that we're building got into technical marketing, and then finally landed up in product management. And I was like, yes, this is what I want to do. Um, my career has mostly been in the Bay Area, uh, working with companies like Cisco and Pivotal and VMware, uh, always building enterprise software products that IT organizations use. And now I'm at Woven, where I work for Entech, where we leverage some of these products. So in my free time, I hike, travel, run, uh, and sometimes do uh, ceramics. But after moving to Tokyo, I think it's mostly been hiking and traveling and exploring this beautiful country. All right. So what does Entech do? Um, you saw some of the demonstrations or the overview of Reen and uh, Woven City. So Entech actually, compared to 
traditional IT teams, when you think about it, like they're pretty slow, they're ticket-based, they're more of a cost center. Here at Bowen, Entech actually plays a fundamental role in enabling the mission of, of Bowen. So that is to build mobility products to impact human life. So all of the projects and products that you see are built on the infrastructure that's provided by Entech. So this is a snippet of the services that Entech provides. First is, you know, just traditional technology infrastructure. The goal here is to support all our employees. We have a pretty global team, things like devices, networks, HR systems, help desk, and other common IT functions fall into this bucket. The second one is around building a global collaboration platform. So this one's really exciting because it's not just serving Bowen, but also partners um, that are, you know, uh, working with the whole Toyota group. And this is basically providing a single place for you to uh, get access to common development tools like GitHub, Jira, Confluence, and then a runtime environment using Kubernetes and monitoring for all your applications. So this, this whole space is evolving really rapidly. And so we have to keep up with a lot of these uh, innovations. And then finally, there's like software first. So really changing the way we collaborate, um, enabling Toyota with um, digital transformation. And this includes tools like GWS and Slack and, and enabling uh, users across Woven and Toyota to use them. All right, so these are some of our key themes for 2023. Um, basically, the whole idea for Entech is to provide technology infrastructure that everybody can use and technology infrastructure that just works. So this is around like providing a, a really good customer experience, having a great employee experience. So every employee should be productive and then um, providing this in a way that's cost optimized and also providing it in a way that's software first, really leveraging some of the modern collaboration tools. And then in the middle there is the collaboration platform that I spoke about, which is really providing infrastructure for these projects that are building really innovative things and they need a reliable and trusted platform to build uh, their whatever technology they're building, right? In many different areas. So just looking at what is keeping us busy right now, um, we're really, really focused on our collaboration platform. So that's building new, new features as well as onboarding new users. We are building this as platform as a product. So it's very much, you know, listen to users, release features, get a feedback loop going, and then iterate on it. Um, the next part is around technology standardization. So within any enterprise, there's like hundreds of tools that you can choose, and each person wants to use a different tool for a different reason. So some of our work is also evaluating the best tools, figuring out what the ROI is, and then rolling it out to all our users. The next part is around operational ex efficiency. So this is really about automating repeatable processes, using things like AI to make our jobs easier and to, to in, improve customer satisfaction. And then finally, networks and devices, right? We're all connected. Our work requires us to be forever, all, always available online, able to respond. And so this is really around enhanced network monitoring, securing all our, all our devices, and then providing a single global network so that people can collaborate together. So this was just a very quick overview. I'm going to hand it over now for the next section. Um, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm here after for the social gathering and happy to chat. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Sha. So we'll have a crosstalk in, in just a moment. Um, just give us one or two moments to help us get set up here and we'll, uh, we'll move on to the next topic. And so here we've got our uh, panelists of uh, women in tech here at Woven by Toyota. We have Young from Arene, uh, Daria from Woven City, uh, and Sharuk from uh, Enterprise Technology. Uh, please join me in welcoming our panelists. Thanks, Julia, and thanks very much to our recruiting team who are also our stagehands for this event. <laughs> Great job, guys. Um, 
So I think uh, let's kick it off with some uh, brief introductions. So do we have a mic uh, for our panelists? Wonderful. So let's start with you, Young. Let's learn a little bit about your background. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Young, and I'm from Korea. I joined Wuben in 2021, which is two years ago. Uh, so before I joined Wuben, come to Japan, I, I stayed in Korea working in a Korean company, uh, which is called Antec Services, and then moved to Neighbor, and then I moved to Japan here. Uh, I, so before I joined Wuben, I keep working in the um, IT industry. So uh, switching my job to Wuben is a big challenge to me because it's like switching the industry. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and then I'm now working in the Aryan online services team, which is in charge for the providing the web uh, application services to, um, based on top of the other, other Aryan uh, products. Uh, and my role is front end UI engineer. And uh, I keep doing it since 2015. It's been almost eight years. My hobby is reading uh, uh, books. I just we re keep reading and reading everything in Korean, in English, and I'm now trying to read something in Japanese. I think I'm just addicted to read something. <laughs> and then I, my hobby, other hobby is photography. Uh, I, oh, but no, um, I, I'm now into some kind of macro lens. I really like um, something, uh, observing something in a very detail. And I also like swimming and I like traveling, go to a new world, see how the other other people in the other side of the world lives. <laughs> and I'm trying to uh, try a new hobby recently, which is tango. My friend recommend me because it's, it's a good a hobby. Um, if you go to Milonga in other country, you can make new friends. So, okay. Okay. I'll make a new friend. <laughs> so I tried it. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thanks for your introduction. Um, I heard we have a salsa club at Woven, so maybe we also need a tango club. So, all right, Daria, over to you. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Daria, and I'm from Russia. When I came to Japan really long time ago, I got my master's and PhD here, and I started my career also here in small start startup, also AI related, and then in March 2022, I started to work in uh, Woven by Toyota, and I belong to Woven City Management. I am machine learning engineer, and I'm building the uh, various machine learning systems. And outside of work, I really enjoy hiking, cycling, cooking. Uh, it's, it was a lot easier before I moved to Tokyo doing the hiking and cycling in Tokyo. It's kind of, it takes time, you know, to get to the hiking area, but it's really great for relaxing and relaxation. Yeah. Maybe now I'm more meditating on cooking, creating new uh, cakes, like new design, that kind of stuff. Also, I really enjoy the activities outside of work together with Woven. I put the photo of us uh, from the Mikoshi carrying event. It was real fun. Yeah, that was a great memory. That was a lot of fun. Thanks, yeah. Daria. Yeah. That's all from me. All right. So, Shuruk, over to you. Yeah. Um, hi, everyone. My name is Shuruk. Um, so, I've been here for almost a year now. Uh, I came in May last year. Uh, it's also my first time living in Japan, so uh, it's been an interesting experience. <laughs> um, so I mostly worked in the Middle East area, So, and the companies I worked for were like startup level. So at uh, in AdTech, uh, advertising technology, fintech, um, robotics uh, for uh, lifestyle and delivery. So all over the place. <laughs> um, and then... Now I'm here, um, which is also a completely new, different technology area. So it's very exciting for me to try new things. Um, yeah, and I work as a software engineer um, under platform engineering for Ian Tech. Um, I love our mission and what we're doing uh, to support development and um, engineers um, 
to like realize their vision. Um, so it's been a great journey so far. Um, what I do in my free time, uh, I like painting. So if you see some of the drawings I have, these are my drawings. <laughs> um, so I come from Egypt and I am Nubian. So um, a little bit of a um, spice, I say, uh, in my culture, <laughs> still Egyptian. Um, yeah, and I like music. Uh, I play the ukulele um, and I've been recently doing archery again here in Japan, thankfully. <laughs> um, yeah, I like travel and hackathons. So this was my burning passion during university. Great thing to do. Um, meeting new people, um, new experiences and improving your skills. So yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank Thanks. you. Thanks very much. I actually have an extreme archery expert on my team, so I should introduce you, right? Live networking on the panel, right? All right, let's start with our first question. So I think people would be interested to know why you chose Woven by Toyota and what attracted you to the company. So maybe, sure, we can start with you. Okay. Um, where to start? So um, before coming to uh, Japan or working here um, at Woven by Toyota, uh, I had to move back to Egypt due to COVID, and it was an interesting change for me. Um, not the best, but it was a new experience. Um, and I wasn't feeling very satisfied while working there. And I was like, I, I am a person driven by passion. And that passion is about helping people and uh, making change that makes a difference. So I was like thinking to myself, why not? Um, try to look for a new experience and a new challenge. Um, so during my searching and like looking around, uh, I found Woven by Toyota. And what sparked my passion was the mission back then, which said mobility to love, uh, safety to live. It, it really like sparked me. I was like, oh, okay, this is very interesting. Um, I, wa I want to be part of this. I hope I can be part of this. And I started my uh, process uh, of like applying and uh, yeah, I ended up being here. <laughs> um, my parents were also very encouraging about this. So it, it was like all about like, okay, let's try a new challenge. Let's try um, um, supporting uh, a new uh, interesting area of technology and discover Japan. <laughs> so yeah, great. That's Thanks all. very much. Thank yeah, we find we have people in here in Tokyo in the company from over 65 countries. But the commonality is really this passion for mobility and using our technical skills, right, to do something better for the world. But yeah, it's an incredibly diverse population. All right, Daria, over to you. Yeah, so um Choosing a workplace is really very important for me uh, because in the weekdays, we spend like 50% of our awake time at work. So it's got to be for a good purpose. It's got to be interesting. It's got to move you. And I chose a Woven City project because the um, creating well-being for all purpose really resonates with, with my personal values. And... I believe that my previous experience in the previous company and also the knowledge that I got from my PhD uh, about machine learning and data science, it will really help me to create the new value and contribute to this purpose. Great. Thanks, Daria. Young, what about you? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I think I'm similar to Daria. Uh, first of all, I wanted to keep using my skills and contribute to something new, something challenging or tasks. So um, back to two, 2017, I visit my friend's workplace in San Francisco and I went there for a free meal. <laughs> so <laughs> and, very honest. Yes. <laughs> and they were making the... Uh, the automobile industry much bigger. So, oh, I saw the future there. So, oh, I naively thought it might be a good opportunity to join, to get a chance to work in this industry while still doing my job. Uh, my job is web application development. So I got interest then. 
then I got interested in making the design system for the UI uh, and started searching for the company hiring for that position. So I saw Uven by Toyota on LinkedIn and it perfectly suits my two conditions, new industry, automobile industry and the job position. So, and then I was also interested in the Japanese culture and language since um, it's a neighboring country of Korea. So I want to know, get to know about my neighbor more. <laughs> <laughs> Japanese developers seem also curious and the market and make some new friends. So yeah, why not? <laughs> Great, yeah. wonderful. Yeah, I also hear from a lot of people that solving problems that have yet to be solved is one of the major things that bring them here. So it's great to have you again. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So in terms of our next question, I think maybe um, people are also interested to hear a little bit about your future career vision. When I interview people for the company, one of my first questions usually is, how does this position sort of fit in your career trajectory? Where have you come from, but also where are you going to make sure that the role that we're offering you fits for where you want to take your career? So could you talk a little bit about your career journey and where you're headed and how your current role fits in? Mm, okay. Oh, my current role fits perfectly <laughs> to my future career too. So I want to keep working on the front end side because I like communicate with customers through the UI I've worked on and I like some I like to see something in very detail. It's one pixel matters. <laughs> so um imagining the UX and then um the uh the the product I, I like I, I like seeing people being happy about the products that I'm making. I like making uh, customers happy. Yeah. So, uh, but also want to be an ethical engineer um, and who uh, I don't want to make the users at being addict to my, the products that I'm making, uh, which using a weird bad trick. <laughs> I want to just provide them a real value so that they can be more um, productive and more efficient about their life. So, and I think the front-end uh, development is very interdisciplinary work uh, because it's the end point where all the stakes, stakeholders like PM, PO, backend developer, and the designers, their old hopes are intertwined <laughs> in the UI that I'm making. So, uh, and it should be done beautifully. So I like, uh, I like, the current position and I want to keep doing it you know, continuously. Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Young. I think we can see whatever industry it is, the world is moving more and more towards experience that I talked a little bit about in my opening. So that's definitely a good direction to be headed in your career. And I can see now why you like my macro lens photography. Every pixel matters. <laughs> All right, Daria, how about you? Um, I come more from a research background and I was uh, really doing more uh, theoretical research that stays more in the conference, be belong to the conference. And I wanted my knowledge to, to be applied in the real projects. And that's why one of the reasons I wanted to join this particular project and how I see my career is growing into the leading position, technical leading position for machine learning projects because it's very different from how you usually formulate research and then switching to industry, taking into account not just the um, result, the accuracy, but also the cost and the value that it creates for business, right? It's not only about the result. It should be a value, it should be measurable, it should be improvable, and it should be used. And now, thank you, Daria. And for anyone who follows the history of the company, you may know that we were actually formed from the Toyota Research Institute for Advanced Development. So there are a lot of people in the company who are PhDs who come from research, and that's very much valued in our engineering spirit. We're dealing with problems that haven't been solved yet, and a lot of them need fundamental research. So if that's something that attracts you, this is definitely an environment that uh, where you can cultivate your research skills as well. All right, so Sharuk, how about you? Yeah, okay. Um, so um, future career plans have always been kind of hard and like challenging for me. So uh, I always end up answering in interviews whenever I'm asked something like that, or like, oh, 
Um, where do you see yourself five years from now? Like, honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But for sure, I know I want to be working um, in a place um, on a product that can support people's lives and improve lives. So like the impact is more important than where do I see myself? Um, so this is really important for my passion. Um, maybe recently I've been thinking like, okay, uh, I like being part of the bigger picture, being involved in different areas of like the devel development process, uh, like end to end. So um, say mocking the design for the product, developing the front end, developing the back end, being involved in the infrastructure part. Um, and it is like, it's very enjoyable for me. So maybe being a product owner or a product manager later on in the future would be a nice place. But right now I am focusing on being a better engineer. Um, if you wanna reach to this point, you really need to work on what you have right now. So great to have future plans, but focus at the moment. At least that's what I think. <laughs> So, yeah, yeah, no, that's very good advice. Uh, the best way to grow your career is hard work, for sure. Yeah. So I think people are also interested to hear about what a typical day at Woven by Toyota looks like. So, Shrup, maybe we can start with you, but maybe there isn't an exactly typical day, but could you describe some of the ways you usually spend your time? Okay. Um, so as an engineer, um, well, working in a team involves a lot of discussions, design, technical design discussions specifically, um, back and forth, understanding requirements, um, having good communication with your team members is very, very important. Um, and always not being afraid to voice out um, like opinions, ideas, things like that. So lots of um, class, close, close collaboration happens. Um, so yeah, so I, most of my day is basically like that. Um, I like coming to the office on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So it's really packed. Um, I don't have lunch, <laughs> not a very healthy thing to do, but, um, I prefer like having like light snacks and just, uh, a good, um, uh, cup of tea to keep me going. Um, and then towards the end of the day, I like to go around and try to find, um, uh, nice restaurants, halal restaurants, uh, because uh, I have dietary restrictions. Um, uh, so yeah, so basically that's how my day goes by. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you mentioned that the office is really packed and that's something I've definitely noticed. Um, the canteen is often so full, sometimes it can be hard to get a seat. Uh, this is definitely an environment where people like to come to the office yeah. and collaborate together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And also one more thing uh, before forgetting. Um, so um, I like to utilize the praying area here in the office, which is really nice. Like, I really appreciate this type of um, accommodation for diversity and other people's uh, preferences and uh, their life. So uh, yeah, I'm really happy about that. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Thank you. All right, Daria, typical day. Uh, so I think recently I realized that I tend to make most of my job done in the morning. So I usually block several hours for the focus time and really concentrate on my job. And then we usually have a stand-up meeting with the team. And after that, I move to the office. I really appreciate this flexibility from my team and from our company. And after that, I still try to put a little bit of work or have some sync meetings with other teams. Uh, after lunch, it usually also will be some sync meetings either within the team, like weekly meeting, bi-weekly meeting with bigger team, or just simply discussion with touching point about some data exchange or collaboration with other teams. And I usually end up my day uh, with either reading papers, planning, or uh, coding, code review, also necessary for us to do. And uh, in the end of the day, I either go for a walk or to the gym. Our company has a great gym. <laughs> 
And yeah, it really helps me to summarize the day and switch to personal life. Thank, thanks, Daria. You touched a little bit on our hybrid work approach. It was something that we thought really deeply about during the pandemic because we definitely value giving our employees flexibility. But as a innovative company that's also coming together to solve tough problems, we really value being in the office to network and collaborate together. So for our engineers, they're usually in the office Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday to drive collaboration. Um, and then, of course, there's personal accommodations that we definitely enable for people who need to work remote more frequently. All right, Young, over to you. Typical day. Yes. Including Tango. Oh, <laughs> well, Tango. definitely reading, right? <laughs> <laughs> reading usually happens on commute. So, yeah, my, my day usually starts around 8 or 8.30 a.m. It's quite early. Um, my day is quite opposite of Daria's schedule because I have more meetings in the morning because I need to speak and have meeting with uh, NA people. I recently uh, collaborating with um, NA people, so there's no other way if I don't attend the morning meetings because they 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 need to sleep. <laughs> so yeah, so I have a I have a, a one on one or discussion technical discussion meeting with the, about the product. And then we have a team stand up around 9, 15 a.m. We follow the sprint, two weeks space sprint. So there are some, some kind of agile ceremonies um, like the other companies follow. So, and after that, I either have um, focus time for the tickets that I need to close and have another meeting or one-on-one -on -one until the lunch time. Uh, and then sometimes during the lunch time, we also have tech and lunch um, meetings so that anyone can share what they learn during their work so um i'm thinking about oh why how about we having um presenting up something about the front-end technologies too because no one tried it before so <laughs> it's one of my wish um uh, to-do list <laughs> and then uh -huh. the afternoon is not much different from the morning uh, so my days ends around uh, 5 or 6 p.m so oh i think all i need to do is secure off uh, um certain amount of focus time so that I need, I can finish my tasks or uh, sprint tasks on time. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Young. Uh, you mentioned NA, which for us is North America. Our second largest office after Tokyo is in Palo Alto. Uh, so many of us have morning meetings and then we're moving to the office later in the afternoon. So yeah, thanks very much. Now we have you on the record that you're signing up to do a tech lunch, right? <laughs> all right we won't we don't have to share that all right so let's talk a little bit about balancing work with our private life especially with the pandemic i think it caused a lot of us to reflect about what's truly important and how to balance our work life with our private life um maybe young i can ask you first uh, a little bit about managing work-life balance hmm. i think um for work-life balance i just put uh, the appointment with myself, <laughs> go home. <laughs> it's, you can, you can, uh, anyone can access my calendar and see it because if I don't put that, if I don't block that timeline, I just keep working until like 7 or 8, 8 p.m. It happens all the time in the, my previous company. So, okay, this is just promise with me. <laughs> so uh, I think it's really helpful. Uh, and then I really work weekends. Uh, it doesn't happen uh, that much, uh, no. Mm. And then I used to spend a lot of time with coworkers, but recently I'm also trying to make more uh, friends or m meet new people outside of work. Uh, so, but I'm sure that this work-life balance is not something that you can fix. It's not like 50-50 because you, sometimes there's a project that you want to work on <laughs> and then sometimes, oh, maybe not. So I need to, I mean, I want to meet more friends and then hanging out outside of work. So I think it's like a CISO. You can go to the other side, but you cannot stay there longer. So it's like <laughs> endless game of CISOing. <laughs> so, yeah, but um, I think um, so. Uh, I think the the important thing is uh, know when you are going to the um, end of the work uh, side or end of the life side. So I think it's the most important thing. Mm. 
for the work-life balance. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks very much. All right, Daria, when you're not at the gym. <laughs> yeah, I really prefer to put that physical activity boundary between work and personal time. It really helps to switch the mind. So it's kind of, I don't already assume it the problem for me for the weekdays, but for the weekends, it can be challenging because machine learning is very actively developing uh, technology. And if you stop tracking that, you kind of really feel that you are stagnant, left behind. You really want to follow up. There are all the meetups, tutorials, workshops that you want to attend and listen to. It's interesting. It's exciting, right? And yeah, it can be challenging to put a day off, but I do promise myself and sometimes just the block one day, preferably a week, but more frequently once in two weeks <laughs> that I will not touch anything work or profession related. That is so very much important and it helps me to stay productive. It helps me to recharge and see new perspective. Yeah, yep. Thanks, Daria. Yeah, it's ironic, like as an engineer, sometimes I think the best ideas or solutions are coming when you're not doing your work yep. and you give your time yourself that mental break. Yep. Yeah. All right, sure. Okay. Man, I, I'm not the best person about <laughs> life balance. <laughs> um, because I sometimes get really obsessive when I'm working on something. So I end up just losing myself like time running off, uh, like working until seven and eight. But I try my best to keep um, um, good enough time during the weekend, um, unless I have something I really need to deliver. Um, so it's really important to organize my time um, and responsibilities. Uh, so over the weekends, to unwind, I like to discover Japan. So as I said, this is my first year here. So lots of like lots of stuff are like, oh wow, I want to try this. Um, I like to go to um, Japanese musicals. Um, to it's really good to help me practice my Japanese, um, and also attending concerts, um, as well as yeah. Recently, I started playing archery again, so it's really nice. But I am not a sportsy person. <laughs> So sometimes I would just end up like staying home and playing video games online and like maybe practicing my ukulele and Japanese singing skills. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's really important if you don't want to get burned up, burn like a bur burnout. Yeah, a burnout um, and you continuously be able to um, be productive and deliver on time and give your 100 percent at work. Also give your body proper rest. Uh, so yeah, that's <laughs> great. Thanks very much. At Woven by Toyota, we try to drive a really pay for performance culture where we're not incentivizing people on how many hours they spend in the office, but rather the results that they drive. So our compensation is a mix of our base salary short term as well as long term incentive, which is very much performance focus. So trying to give people the flexibility to drive the result that they need within the time that they have, or if you're very passionate for a certain project, <laughs> but please eat lunch. I'm going to take you to lunch. Oh, <laughs> All right, let's move ahead to maybe some more engineering focused questions. So some of the highlights or successes you've had here in your job, as well as some of the challenges. So, okay. Um, for me, even before coming here, it's always been handling um, requirements from customers um, and like understanding requirements and always being able to iteratively um, improve what you have built. Uh, as engineers, we take care of our code as our babies. So if I tell you, go change your parts of your code, you'd be like, no, it's working fine, right? <laughs> so there's a, a bit of resistance when it comes to like change. So it's really important to be able to understand what you're working on and make a proper argument on how you can improve or how you can make change. And it's also... Um, what I like that right now, our culture is all about being agile, being flexible, being able to continu continuously uh, improve what we have and look for the benefit of our 
customers? How can we make their lives easier? How can we improve their lives? Um, yeah, and one thing that I'm really proud of is whenever I'm delivering something or uh, a piece of product and see the impact it makes on the uh, customer, it makes me really happy. So definitely that's usually the highlight of like my quarter or day when I hear like, oh, this customer is really happy about this new feature. <laughs> so yeah, that's for me. <laughs> Thank you. Great. Thanks very much. Daria, over to you. Yeah, so um, the highlights, well, basically both highlights and challenges, they come from the fact that uh, Woven City is ever evolving city project. And we really come with a lot of brainstorming, coming up with new ideas, prototyping, and it's really exciting. But the hard part is that the city is not built yet. So my highlights are always coming from the moments that we build something or we come up with idea and we need some either data or test the idea. And there are always supportive colleagues who will contribute their time, provide support, uh, good feedback so that we can continue growing and evolving and improving. So this is really a big, positive point for me and the challenge is yes we are very young ambitious project and it's uh, sometimes the requirements change the strategy change and we have to align yeah so the highlights and challenges are two sides of one coin yeah i would say it's the combination of being in a fast-moving industry trying something that hasn't been done before, right? And being in a young company. So, but it makes it exciting at the same time, right? Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes when we're trying to set annual goals for our team, we're like, hmm, annual. <laughs> so we have annual goals that we adjust on a quarterly basis, right? All right, Young, over to you. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the, the best moment that I experienced in this company is that the, the UI component library that I've been working on since I joined the company is still alive. Oh, my baby is still alive. <laughs> and then I've been, I'm also using it for other products that I'm developing. So I'm a producer, but I'm also the consumer. So, oh, that's the best moment. Okay. <laughs> but the challenge challenges uh, working in Wuben into uh, Wuben by Toyota as an engineer is like Daria and Shuruk said the priority is changing and sometimes the work is also happening but I think it's also a good chance to um, test uh, that our the the library or the, or the the basic building blocks that we've been developing on are working well in the new environment so uh, it's, it's, uh, if I think about the time and effort that I need to put on the new priorities and the new tasks, uh, I mean, it's, it's kind of annoying, but oh, it's also a good chance to to cite it. So yeah, it's challenging, but it's also the moment that maybe can be the best, another best moment. So <laughs> thank you. Great. Thanks very much. So I wanted to move over to some of the questions that were submitted online. And we have a tradition at Woven by Toyota during our all hands that anyone can submit questions through our online tool for voting. And our tradition is to make sure that we read out the questions word for word as they're asked. So if you could bring up the first question that came from the online audience. So these days, technology evolves day by day with high speed. How do you keep yourself updated and enthusiastic in the circumstance? Oh, yeah. yeah guess. Over to you, Young. Yes. <laughs> I think the only way is just um, having some, um, uh, dedicating some, some time uh, continuously, like making as a routine of my life. So sometimes I, we have a developer learning session just uh, between my teammates and we just watching the workshop video or the sharing the article that I'm interested in and uh, so that we can freely discuss what we're thinking about this technology even though oh, this this is very much um, popular outside of Wuben by Toyota but we can also think about oh 
maybe is is not adequate to to our our library or our technology. So we I think it's important to having a, some kind of discussion time between the teammates, and then I I also go to I also organize the um uh, developer meetup outside of work on Sunday morning so that we can also uh, gather uh, at a cafe um and then just study or uh, whatever we want to do. It's a self paced uh, study. And then after that, we share what we learn and oh, and then how the other company is working. So oh, that's the two practice that I'm doing. Ah, yeah. <laughs> Great. Thanks, Young. So as our time clock is counting down and we want to make sure we have a chance to get questions from the audience, Daria and Shuruk, if you don't mind, I think I'll turn it over to our beautiful audience here and see if anybody has any questions and we'll try to answer them in a kind of lightning round. So any brave people who'd like to ask a question. Wonderful, great. Can we get the mic for the second row? Thank you for being our first brave question answer. <laughs> so this one is for Daria. Uh, you say that you like read all the time and all the time like, passively working. How do you deal with burnout? Um... I, as I said, it's very important for me to put the boundary for the personal time. So first of all, when you work hard, so you accumulate the cortisol, the stress hormone, the way to release it is physical activity. It's important. <laughs> so that's my way to fight the burnout, fight it. <laughs> Thanks very much. And Shuruk, you briefly mentioned the prayer room that we have on the 19th floor. And that also includes a rest area, like a kind of quiet. It's a kind of no talking, no phones area. And sometimes when I'm feeling a bit stressed out or burned out, I'll go into one of the pods and just sit and look out at the nice view for 10 minutes and try to clear my mind. Um, we also offer all our employees an online uh, mental health service including coaching and communities, which are beyond woven, including professional coaching services that people can use as well. Yeah. All right, next question. In, okay, maybe we start in the back and then we'll go up to the second row. Hi, hello everybody. Thank you so much for a beautiful discussion today. Lots of insights. Um, one uh, question around culture. So Toyota is very famous for heritage culture in the world, right? Not only in Japan. And uh, women by Toyota, to me, it feels like it's super cool, innovative hub of everything new and fantastic going on in the industry of future of mobility and everything. I'm very curious to learn a little bit more about your culture from the perspective of employee uh, communities that you have within the company or really kind of the culture of women, women by Toyota. Yeah, yeah great you. question. Who'd like to take a stab at that? <laughs> Maybe Daria, we can start with you. Well, we actually do have a lot of clubs that are both work-related and non-work-related. For actually keep updating, I organized the machine learning paper sharing meeting because I strongly believe that we can achieve something faster by growing together, by sharing the knowledge. And this is one of the things that we can do. And the organizing any club is very free and we have plenty of them. Yeah, no, thanks very much. I think maybe one way I would describe our culture is ever evolving. There's probably no other company in the world that brings together the type of talent, both from software and hardware, from automotive and non-automotive, even within software. I'm from big tech. I have people who've only ever worked in startups. We also have a lot of nationalities, as I talked about. We have the, the Tokyo, you know, Japan, US dynamic going on as well. We have people who bring a lot of heritage, craftsmanship, and structure coming out of Toyota. 
And again, people who are coming out of more agile environments. So we're constantly learning on how to work together and leverage our diversity as a strength. It comes with its challenges, but it also really comes with its successes. So we're trying to create, I guess, a new kind of culture, especially in Tokyo, right? Um, where we don't always see such diverse environments, but it's changing a lot, isn't it? Okay. All right. Oh, I think we had a question in the second row. Yeah, you're up. Hi. Well, thanks for holding this event. It was really nice getting to know you, young Daria and Shuru. So I remember I should have mentioned something about like uh, one of her happier moments here in uh, working at Woven is when uh, she received like really positive feedback from a client. So just hearing a little bit of the introductions like that was made earlier about the various products here, it sounded like maybe some of your clients aren't like I wanted to ask about the clients. Are they developers and engineers, technical people or are they more lay people? Oh, okay, so um, the product I'm working on is for engineers. So most of our clients are engineers um, who interact with tools like uh, Jira, GitHub, um, working like in a developer environment. So yeah, um, that's the type of uh, people we work with. <laughs> I see. And like, is it people within the company or people from other companies? Like, um. Yeah, it's pretty diverse. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Welcome. And well, for Woven City, we mostly collaborate within the team. And maybe recently we started to invite inventors and we can attend the meetups and communicate with them. But the mostly development and feedback is internal. As I was saying, like, it's really great to have supportive uh, colleagues who will provide the feedback. So by now, this is the reality. <laughs> oh, the products I'm working on is used by the internal uh, teams and the TMC people uh, outside of Woven. Uh, they using for developing their own software for the vehicles. Mm. So, yeah. No, thanks. It's a it's a great question, and it's something that we often talk about as part of our employee engagement survey. There's a question that says, sort of, do our processes enable you to meet the needs of your customer? And people are always talking about what customer means. If you look at, for example, the Arene platform, some teams are working on tools which are used by developers within Woven by Toyota and within the Toyota Group. One of the things. I love about automotive is unlike traditional software where we tend to try to develop everything in house, building a car or a vehicle is truly a team sport. So important partners like Denso, like iSheen, like JQuad are some of our key customers who have been traditionally delivering software into a vehicle and have so much valuable know-how. And then obviously the Arene platform Ideally, we want to reach the end user in the vehicle and to be able to enable that kind of experience and understand how what they're looking for in terms of services. So it's pretty diverse across the company, but it's a great question. Thanks. All right. Oh, yeah, right there. Good timing. Um, thank you, uh, uh, the uh, guest speaker. Uh, for today's um, inspiring talk, I've learned a lot from you guys. Um, I'm just wondering, um, because uh, Toyota, uh, Woven by Toyota is moving from a uh, hardware-first uh, company to a software-first company, so uh, what would be the biggest challenge in this transition? Um, my second question is a bit more about a uh, cultural difference, which is um, you mentioned about uh, the Japan and U.S. cultural difference uh, because uh, you have uh, both uh, uh, employees here and in the U.S. So uh, how do you mitigate the difference and how do you make this as in um, uh, I don't know, an advantage in terms of diversity to generate more innovation. Thank you. 
Yeah, maybe I can start with the first question and then hand over to the engineering team for the hardware software. I think when it comes to having a workforce that's so diverse, we try to focus on our values because no matter where you come from, no matter where you were raised, no matter what your life experience is, we can all agree on our core values. And for Woven, that's growing together through teamwork, which is strongly focused on an environment of inclusion and respect. That's courage to make history, understanding that we're trying to solve breakthrough challenges. So we're gonna have some setbacks and we're gonna have some successes and we need to, to um, uh, support each other. And the last is creative ownership. So really taking ownership of the technology that we develop and thinking about the impact that it has on people and the impact it has on society. So by focusing on our values, we can really bring everybody together regardless of where they come from. Right? So maybe on the hardware software challenge, who would like to take that? And I think this will be our final, final question. Um, not, I cannot answer the deeply uh, in a technical detail, but uh, one of the things that we are trying to do to have a smoother transition is that we are trying to respect the Toyota heritage, for example, like a uh, production line. So we, and on the light, the colors. <laughs> so we are trying to embed those kind of Toyota heritage into our products so that, oh, um, even though the hardware uh, engineers, they have some, um, some some kind of visual cues that they can understand easily in our software products uh, through the UI that I'm making. Uh, that's one of the efforts that we are putting in. Oh, I can answer that. <laughs> um, so the product I'm working on at the moment um, is actually to support the collaboration and utilization of the dev tools that uh, a lot of the engineers are working on for like the software part. Um, so being able to provide them with the proper access, with the proper tools, all of these things actually ease the process from, um, also allows them to be able to clo collaborate closely um, and realize their uh, vision for the products they're working on. So yeah, uh, providing the tools is part of it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I have a one comment about the communication with the different cultures. I think I, I had some seminar here in the company when I first joined. Um, I forgot the name of the book, but it was um, the, uh, the instructor cited that book. Uh, it was about the research between the uh, in a big company that well, where the companies like Wuben. So there are so many people from each country and then there are some some traits uh that we can evaluate based on the country where they come from so we sometimes do that kind of cultural seminar in the company and then we also talk about our countries by uh and then compare it with others like for example i'm from korea i'm sometimes be very indirect compared to the employees from the america so i think the key is the, the having a honest communication and honest feedback uh, so yeah, that's the effort. <laughs> for the community. Uh, no, thank you, Young. So thank you very much for everyone for asking questions and to all our panelists and for listening to our crosstalk. I hope it was helpful. And Julia, let me hand back over to you. Thank you, Sinead. Thank you, Young. Thank you, Daria. Thank you, Sharuk. And uh, thank you to the audience for the fantastic questions as well. Let's keep the interesting discussions going for the uh, social gathering uh, as well. Uh, so next, I'd like to uh, introduce you all to some of our uh, company benefits. At Woven by Toyota, investing in our employees' well-being uh, really is important to us. Um, we firmly believe that um, a well-supported employee is also going to be a happy uh, and productive uh, employee. Benefits are a great way to uh, integrate these. Uh, and today I'm going to dive into a little bit more detail uh, into three of our key uh, benefits highlight on, highlighted on the screen here for you. So when it comes to parental leave, um, we strongly feel that supporting both parents um, really is a key step that uh, companies can take to help bridge 
some of those gender gaps uh, we still see today. We want our employees to know the company supports you and your families. Um, and the best way to do this is by offering fully compensated leave so that our employees can, uh, you know, take time off work, um, spend precious time with newborn or new family members. Uh, and um, of course, you know, Japan does have a, a pretty decent government program called Ikuji Kyugyo. Um, however, in, in this government program, only two thirds of the uh, salary is is compensated, uh, whereas here at Woven by Toyota, um, that leave period is 100% uh, compensated. Um, you know, that way our employees, um, they don't really have to worry about their uh, salaries decreasing. Um, they can quite uh, comfortably, um, you know, decide to take that leave uh, and spend precious time uh, with, uh, with family. Our fertility support program called CARET uh, provides employees with company-sponsored funds for fertility and family-forming journeys. Um, you'll see uh, a list of some examples of the types of treatment um, that this support program uh, covers on the screen here. Um, CARET also provides employees with unlimited chats with doctors and other types of uh, specialists. Uh, and CARET also gives employees access to uh, our database of top providers, uh, exclusive partnerships and discounts, uh, and of course, personalized support uh, every step of the way. And when it comes to mental well-being, it is especially important for companies to um, not only be aware of, um, but to actively support uh, and invest in uh, the mental well-being of their employees. We offer personalized support uh, and provide access to a safe uh, community via our group support sessions. Uh, and we also provide financial support uh, and cover the cost of one-to-one uh, -one sessions with uh, licensed clinical therapists uh, or well-being coaches, depending on the, uh, the needs of the employee. Uh, and support is also available in uh, over 50 languages. And lastly, let us introduce some of our open positions to you all. Um, so Myra will kick us off with uh, an intro to our open positions in Irene. Myra, please come up on stage. <laughs> thank you. So thank you so much. Um, yes, uh, it was really exciting to hear you all talking about your experience at Woven. I could feel very identified with uh, some of the statements that were made. I think one of the last questions, it, I, I wanted to maybe like answer it a little bit because it was about that transformation between, you know, like coming from Toyota being a hardware first company to software first. That is exactly one of the key um, kind of achievements or key goals that we target in Arene. And for that, I don't, I think there's, it's challenging because uh, you know, like transforming the way that you work and coming from thinking first around like specific uh, modules in the vehicle and then trying to think about the vehicle as a whole, like that mindset shift is really difficult actually. So like we like to collaborate in Arena with our customers, of course, like with TMC, you know, and other first year suppliers like Denso and other partners to try and together establish how do we achieve that transformation? But for that, we do need a lot of support. And as you can see, there is a lot of open positions in our um, in our in team. So we have um, different uh, kind of platforms or kind of sub platforms in our in. We have uh, in vehicle platform, which are creating the SDKs, um, the OS that goes in the vehicle and OTA. We also have an engineering and validation platform which is creating what we call a CICD pipeline plus a little bit more. We call it our software production line plus our testing capabilities and simulation capabilities for software, uh, automotive software. And then we also have our um, online platform, which has uh, like some of the AI capabilities, like really analyzing um, fleet data, improving the ADADAS uh, development as well as our portal for our customers. So we have really like, a, I think a 
nice collection of very different sub platforms that we're doing Irene. And for that, we're looking for team leads. We're looking for software architects, for data engineers, compiler engineers, requirements engineers. I mean, I could read all of this. I think you guys can read them as well. Um, please like take a look at the the positions. There's really something for everyone. I can also vouch for Irene as a team that is very diverse with people coming from many different backgrounds. That was something that was kind of intimidating for me when I came in because I came with automotive experience, but I was kind of scared like, hey, I'm going to be working with people coming from Google, you know, and people who worked on like C++ standardization, like, oh my God, that's going to be challenging. But I have to say like the atmosphere is really great and people are very keen on learning from each other and collaborating. So that's it's really a great place to work. So please look at uh, the positions we have. We also have compliance as well. So security and compliance, that's very important when you create software that goes in the vehicle. Um, scan the QRs. If you have any questions about any of these positions, um, you can reach out to me on LinkedIn, like with my name, Mayra Castellanos. I'll be very happy to support you, um, give you any tips, or you know, maybe direct you to people that can help you a little bit more. And yeah, I think that is about the Erin positions. Thank, Thank you, you Myra. So next up, we've got Woven City. Michael, please come up on stage. Thank you. Okay, so Woven City, we're still growing. Um, we're still filling out the organization. Uh, we're about five, six of the way through that. So we have positions open. Uh, we have back-end engineers, front-end engineers, cloud engineers, but wait, there's more machine learning, data, program managers, project managers, product managers. We need great engineers. We need great scientists. We need great leaders to come and join us. Um, there's the QR code. You know what to do. Thank you, Michael. And last but not least, we've got Enterprise Technology. Usha, please come on up. Cool. Thank you. We don't have 50 plus positions, but we have some pretty cool and exciting roles to fill. Um, the first two are around cloud engineering and cloud FinOps engineering. So this is really about making the best use of public cloud. Um, and the second, the, the first one is really about like DevOps and infrastructure and having uh, the ability to leverage the best features that are coming out. And you know that cloud is evolving at a really fast pace. So this is a really exciting role. Second one is around FinOps. So if you like business and the intersection of business with technology, this is a great role as well. Uh, the next two roles are on our a, a collaboration platform. So Sharuk spoke a little bit about this. Uh, this is really about understanding developers and this is developers within Woven by Toyota, but also with a, a very wide range of developers across uh, Toyota, their partners. So this is truly a, a very exciting uh, space to be in. And then finally, um, the technical solutions engineer and the end user product uh, manager, uh, this, these are about your productivity tools and end user tools. So how do we bring the best tools to our users? Uh, and this, this is not, these are not developers. These are actually like, what are the best corporate system tools or business analytics or things like that. Um, and so both these roles are in those areas. And so, so the, the, these roles are around product as well as uh, engineering. So take a look at the QR code. And again, if you have any questions, we are here. Um, I think I'm the last speaker before this social hour. So maybe I'm standing in between you and social hours. So thank you. Thank you, Usha. And so uh, this is just a, an overview of what our uh, hiring process looks like from application through to uh, offer meeting. Um, the process does differ slightly depending on the position uh, you're applying to as well as the business area. Um, but this is a, a general kind of overview on what our standard uh, hiring process looks like. Uh, so the process will start with... Um, your application where uh, the recruiter and hiring team will uh, review your application um, and they'll get back to you with uh, the results and next steps. Um, then you'll have a call with the recruiter 
and you'll have an opportunity to um, learn a little bit more about us, uh, to learn a bit more about the uh, the business area, um, the team, uh, and and so on. And you can really assess to see, um, you know, if what we have to offer really aligns with um, your uh, career goals. Um, after the call with the recruiter. Uh, we entered the uh, technical assessment uh, stage. Um, historically, this used to be a take-home technical challenge by default uh, for all positions. Um, we were fortunate enough to uh, receive constructive feedback from our candidates on, um, you know, this portion of our process, you know, it 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 does take a lot of time. It's a big commitment um, that we're asking candidates to, uh, you know, spend time uh, completing an assessment um, before even starting interview process. Um, so just in the interest of, you know, continuously improving uh, that candidate journey and experience, um, we've recently diversified uh, the types of technical assessments um, we can ask candidates uh, to complete uh, before moving on to uh, interview stage. Um, so some examples include things like uh, a live coding interview for engineering positions. Um, we do still have take home technical challenge, of course, um, portfolio submission for design positions. Uh, and something we've recently introduced is um, uh, contributions to uh, open source uh, projects. Um, we were successfully able to hire a number of engineers um, just through looking at, you know, some of the contributions they make on uh, GitHub and, and uh, platforms like this. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we've kind of varied uh, this uh, technical assessment uh, phase. Um, and then we move on to uh, virtual or on-site interviews. Um, so there'll be a technical interview a cross-functional and a hiring manager interview. Uh, then we move into a uh, hiring decision and hiring committee. And then finally, uh, we go through the final uh, approval stage uh, and uh, offer meeting uh, and benefits guide with your recruiter. And don't forget to follow us on social. Um, we, uh, we do have some, um, you know, updates uh, periodically um, so you can stay tuned for uh, company information and exciting updates from us through uh, our corporate Twitter account, uh, LinkedIn account, Facebook account, uh, as well as Woven City's uh, Facebook account uh, as well. And lastly, it would help us out tremendously if you could fill out a, uh, a short uh, survey um, as we'd love to get your thoughts on uh, this event. Um, we'll also be sending you the same uh, questionnaire by email uh, this coming Monday, uh, 24th. Um, so, so stay tuned for that. Um, and you can see a cute little dinosaur in the middle of the QR code here for you. All right. And so that concludes the uh, online portion of our event this evening. Um, for those of us who, who joined online, um, we really appreciate your uh, time to, to come and, um, you know, uh, spend with us. Um, and uh, yeah, it was, it was just an absolute pleasure and uh, have a good weekend for the uh, online participants.